I've owned and used this studio light for well over a year now. And uh, it's alright, but the small size has got its limitations and there are also a couple of annoying issues with it. This particular light is a 65 watt daylight balanced light and uh, I got that since I'm only using 5500 Kelvins anyway. And also these daylight lights tend to be a little bit more powerful. There's more light in the 65 watt light than the bicolor one. So that's what I wanted. So let's get into it, but first, what's in the box? This light comes in a very nice padded box. It's not exactly a pelican case, but at least it gives some level of protection when transporting it and it keeps all pieces in one place. There's even room left for some extra small pieces of equipment here. In the box you will find a reflector, a Bowens mount ring, which fits okay-ish on the light itself. It doesn't click in 100% perfectly, which can be a problem when using it with a heavy softbox. There is a light stand mount with a long lever for tilting the light. It's got sort of a ratchet in here to not get in the way of the light. The light slides nicely onto this rail, and this is an important bit. Then there's this thing, I only saw it today actually, and I have no clue what it is for. The 90 watt power brick is the weakest link in this kit. We'll talk more about this later. Finally, there's a V-mount adapter included, complete with a D-tap power cord. Yes, this light can be run on batteries too, and even with power banks, providing that the power bank can give enough punch to drive the light. There are a few buttons here in the rear. I rarely use all of them. I mainly use the power button, of course, and also the power level button here as well. It's a rocker switch here. And you can also push it to change the power level in 25% increments. For me, this is the only thing I changed on this light, so it's extremely easy and quick to use. Often I only leave it at 75% power level, and that's that. There are a few settings available, but since I only own one of these lights, I don't need to pair them with other lights, and I'm certainly not going to download an app to control it. It seems as if there is a bloody app for every piece of camera gear nowadays, and I'm very happy that I don't need an app to control this light. That power button and the rocker switch are the only two buttons I will ever touch. Apparently, these lights can be mounted in clusters as some sort of a unique selling point. But how many of us will ever do that? All I'm looking for is simplicity and decent quality light output, and I think I get that in relation to the price. I feel that the build quality is excellent. It's uh, aluminium, not much plastic anywhere. Well, this back cover, that's made from plastic. Um, otherwise, everything seems to be made of metal, and I like that a lot. And I also like the rails here, which you mount the lights with. It makes it easier to balance the light back and forth like this. And uh, that's good for me because I'm using an oversized soft box. It's 80 centimeters and it's kind of heavy. So it's actually important for me to be able to balance it back and forth like this. I need to mention that there are some effects available too. If you're interested in that sort of thing, these are the effects. There is a fan inside of this light as well. It's a very silent fan with different options where you can choose quiet option or a smart option. That's the only options you get. But I only use the smart option because I never hear the fan. It's a very tiny amount of noise when you're using it at the 100% power level. But that's it. Now let's get to the quality of the emitted light. The CRI value is often misleading. You can have a high CRI value but still have a green tint and awful skin tones. I recommend watching this video and you will painfully find out how brainwashed you've been around this CRI value hype. It's difficult for me to be very specific about the quality of the light. I can just say that there's nothing that stands out in any way. I'm okay with what I'm seeing, but again, I'm in no way an expert either. So to the limitations then, with such a small light. This is only 65 watt light and in this video I film with the Sony ZV-1. 
It's zoomed in a bit so the aperture is f2.8 on a 1 inch sensor. The distance from the light and the camera to me is maybe 2.5 meters and there's also a grid fitted to the 80 cm softbox. The image is underexposed but I figured that could be compensated for in post. But no, there's a lot of noise in the image and I should have increased the ISO or moved everything closer and widened the aperture. So here's the limit with this tiny light and that doesn't make it very versatile for other types of setups. It's no problem to get a nice image, it's simply a case of setting up the scene differently, but the light has to be close to the subject. And finally, I've got a couple of tiny issues with this light as well. I feel that the power supply is the weakest link in this kit. It's not possible to change the power cord. If it breaks, you simply need to buy a new 90 watt brick, which aren't too expensive, but not cheap either. And the USB-C plug should really be angled 90 degrees, because it's always bent when fitted to the lights. I worry that this end will break something in the long run, and I always feel the need to unplug the light after every use, or to tilt it upwards. So, would I recommend this light? I think yes, if you are aware of the limitations with using such a small light. But then there's also these new style lights. I can show a picture up here, which seems to be smaller. They seem to be smaller, but this is actually kind of tiny. It's a different form factor, basically. It's very lightweight and it comes with a very good carrying case as well. So I like that. I'm not going to replace this with any other light, at least not anytime soon. So if there's a sale, go and get it.